For a long time, stuttering was the bane of my existence. As a stutterer, as they call it, uh, I felt desperately abnormal and limited. And in school, I had gone through a rotating door of speech therapists, none of which helped me at all, because there was no consistency and no method, really. So they didn't help at all. And at the end of college, I was fed up with my stuttering, not getting any better on its own. And I decided to seek out truly professional help. And I learned a method that is straightforward enough that I can share it. And I hope other people um, who are also in that predicament might be able to benefit from it. Um, Because it's the only uh, therapy that helped me at all. And it actually helped me a whole lot so here's what i learned there's two stages to it and uh, i'm not sure what the relationship is but from the first stage to the second stage but i'm just gonna share it the way that i learned it um so so the first stage is to become aware of all the associated behaviors with your speech um like when the the behaviors that you have when you actually stutter, like uh, maybe you tap your foot, cough, say um, lose eye contact, touch your head, whatever. And um, so it, it's here that a really good speech therapist can help you uh, identify what you're not even aware that you're doing. So practice stripping those things away and be aware of them and just let yourself stutter. Um, so I guess having the associated behaviors, um, it, it sort of puts a, uh, a cloud around it where it's hard to focus on the real issue, maybe. Anyway, in the next stage, you uh, practice reading aloud. You read aloud and you intentionally prolong fluid initial consonants like S, F, L, as opposed to explosive consonants like P, uh, T, B. Like instead of stay, in, instead of saying uh, moose, you would say moose. Instead of November, you'd say November. Do it with consonants that you don't anticipate stuttering on. So when when you're looking ahead, when, when you read aloud, you can tell which which words you anticipate stuttering on, and you stutter because you think you do. And it's it's a vicious cycle. And so this exercise can actually break the vicious cycle and provides you with more control. And in my understanding, it does two things at once. It tricks your brain into thinking that you've already stuttered. And it gives you success to build on, convincing your brain that you don't need to stutter. So it's kind of a trick with uh, two sides to it. You're... Um, the the reason that you stutter as a stutterer is that your your subconscious speech mechanism thinks that you do and expects it and so it just happens because you aren't in complete voluntary control of your speech mechanisms if it if it was then it would be very cumbersome trying to to speak you would have to um if you had to think about every sound that 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 you made um and so when you're just speaking you're not thinking about the sounds you're making you're thinking about what you're saying and the actual sound production is under the control of a of a subconscious if that's the right word module that is doing the mechanical work for you so you don't have to think about it and that's the part where the stuttering gets lodged and why it's it's not possible to just try not to stutter because that part is not even uh, accessible to to voluntary control. It's the same module that makes you speak in the accent that you speak. And uh, it's not something that you think about. You're not trying to make those exact sounds. They just happen. <clears throat> Again, in, intentional pro- prolongations on fluid initial consonants and ones that you don't anticipate stuttering on. So you're not trying to replace actual stuttering acts with prolongations. That's a that's something that um, might be a method of its own, but I think it's of very limited use. So instead, 
you're sort of you you take over the voluntary act of making the sounds by doing the prolongations and because they're prolongations and not actual stuttering afterwards you're like oh i didn't stutter good and that gives you um, success to build on uh, maybe the reason it helped so much for me is because for some reason reading aloud was the the occasion when i stuttered the most and so maybe that's finding a way to do that really upended the cycle and sort of convinced my subconscious brain that I didn't need to uh, stutter as much. So you can practice that as much as you want. And for me, I, I didn't find I needed to keep practicing it all the time um, to keep the stuttering at bay. It's like just getting practice with the reading aloud method to begin with was enough to prove to my subconscious speech demon that I didn't need to stutter. And I'm not completely fluent. Sometimes I still get a block on some sound that I always used to stutter on. So it's still there. But it's nice to know that I can bring out that intentional prolongation method at any time and sort of remind it who's boss. Uh, and occasionally that is something that 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 I do. So it it may seem that that the prolongations are kind of um, that they're no better than than the stuttering, but really they are. They sound a lot better to your listeners, and they're going to sound a lot better to you because you distracted your brain from stuttering on the words that you normally did, and so you 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 get the the su success that you can build on. Um, and that's that's what really helps. Um, over the years, there have been a couple of times when I was under a, a tremendous amount of life stress and my stuttering sort of flared up again. But overall, it's been a noticeable and consistent improvement. Not, not continuous improvement over time, I would say, just at the same level um uh now i i used to just wish and wish that i didn't stutter and think if only i was fluent life would be so grand etc um, i read a long time ago in some book that that's a common thought of stutterers it, it's, it called it the the giant in chains syndrome or something like that um when I became more flu fluent, life didn't suddenly become wonderful. People, people aren't impressed by your not stuttering. So, yeah, it's it is a pain in the ass, but not doing so by itself is not going to unlock wonderful opportunities for you that you, you never had before. Um, whatever other issues you may have with yourself are still there, and. Um, so yeah, it don't let that overshadow everything else about you that you could change or at least work on. That about sums it up. Hope it's helpful. Peace out.